Hey guys, Jay here, and today I want to just give a showcase of a simulacrum run on the current uh, Tasman stun character that I am working on here. Disclaimer, right? <clears throat> this is not yet a completed character. Um, the, re the thing is, I have been uh, trying to set up this current character, and there are aspect of it is actually very good but also there are problems that i would need i would say either a lot of money which i don't really want to step into that category because uh <clears throat> my goal is trying to make a you know somewhat budget build that uh it might be viable to assemble for a lot of people um so yeah my goal is try to make it as budget as possible and i don't want to really just throw a bunch of currency to solve the problems and the problems in particular here is actually single target in terms of defense with the addition of a couple of new things this league actually defensively we are pretty pretty good it is in a very good state that I personally do believe that you can effectively just uh, basically build the Caspian Stun slash AFK character with any class that you want. <clears throat> also, uh, unless you forget, this Simulacrum content now only have 15 waves, so they cut off the first 15 waves of the previous 30 which means you only run the good ways now only run the hard ways now and yeah <clears throat> it just saves a lot of time also in a league that the loot on the ground the loot from the monsters are actually very bad so simulacrum is basically uh, something that uh, from the video of snap i learned this term which is called loot tile so it is not at all affected by like uh, quantity, rarity or something. It's just fixed reward that you can get. For example, in here, right? This wave, it is fragments, scarab, diff card, and essences, right? So guaranteed, you do not scale quantity or rarity or anything like that. You would just get a, on average, deterministic amount of loot, right? <clears throat> you do have RNG on how valuable those are, but... Uh, basically, this is probably the right thing to do this league in terms of like money making. Obviously, you can have like other content that will you know give you a uh, more currency than this, but this is a <clears throat> very particular playstyle, uh, very uh, unique content that you cannot really replicate the experience in map. Sure, maybe you do like an ultimatum run. And uh, that can be potentially, um, you know, a viable thing to do. But personally, I really, really enjoyed the simulacrum here. Uh, this character currently, if you want to do like tier 16 map and, and such, and maybe even some tier 17, but it's, it would be very hard to roll for the tier 17. So I would not recommend you to use this build and try to farm tier 17. T16 is very okay. It can run almost every map. In fact, I even run immune. Uh, I even run a reflect map, and I didn't die because somehow with max max block and uh, you know uh, a pretty good amount of EHP, very very good recovery because I am using ward over here. Uh, we are okay to do uh, reflect map. It doesn't feels any different from doing like any other map actually because. 90% of the time with this character, I am having 68% attack uh, block and 70% spell block. So 98, uh, around 90% of the time, you will not even get damage. Because you simply just block the hit, right? <clears throat> okay. You see there, I already get a full inventory of loot. Uh, let me actually identify all of those. This is dog shit. This is dog shit. And this is actually six or seven jewels or something like that. Oh, I don't need it. <clears throat> right? 
very very nice playstyle obviously you just uh, basically form a bunch of monster kill them and then loot all the ones in the end in one big pile that is very comfortable right as you can see here i pretty much with this current setup i just stand in one place hands off the keyboard i don't need to do anything right just wait for them to just you know basically uh, clean up this screen over here and you can move to the other side <coughs> This applies to almost every layout of uh, Simulacrum. The Act 3 Town layout is a little bit more movement required, but it's nothing that, you know, that bad, right? Uh, let me lure this guy up here because uh, it will be faster right? <clears throat> to have him fight me in, in a bunch of, uh, of random monsters. <clears throat> this is the single target, right? So there is the problem with single target here. And from like wave, sometimes in a hard wave 11, or normally in like wave 12 to, thir uh, to 13, I will have problem with single target. The Omniphobia here is always doable because you you technically will always be able to just, just chip him down eventually. But Kosis does have a like infinite amount of health pool if you don't break through the es so that is a problem that i need to work with and that is a conversation that i want to talk about in this video as well <clears throat> so while we are fighting this guy it will take a little bit i want to talk about a setup that i am using currently so i am using ward right with this new belt i think it should be called understand like understand right understand it should be understand right i just call it i would just call it the understand belt and if you understand how the understand belt work it just basically convert half of your body armors armor and evasion or both it just make the total of that amount cut that in half give you as work so a very very easy thing to do if you don't have this kind of body armor and very good alternative armor is to just use the brass dome brass dome will give you first of all crit immunity second it will give you up to five percent maximum elemental resistance which is super super good by the way and also it gives uh, a bunch of armor that then you can get as work so that is a very very good like easy choice that you can uh, find on the market you don't have to worry about like crafting or finding the right rare gear basically what i put in the search for this body armor i just put uh, body armor require one at least one armor and at least one evasion search and then i click on the number of armor or evasion and then it will sort from the highest to the lowest i find one with a good price this one i bought for one divine by the way it has like Almost, it is at like 5.6, 5.7k armor innovation. So just basically give me a lot of work, right? <clears throat> the wood gear that I'm having here in three other slot, the most important stat in here, I would say, is faster restoration of wood. That will allow you to have your wood restoration time go to 0 0.7 seconds. So with a cap block build, you already do not get hit often. You do not get damage often at all. So every time you get damage, chances are your ward is already back up and it will help you to take the hit or at least take like up to 3.7K in this case of the hit, right? So if you see my fight in the simulacrum here, you will almost never see my life bar actually go to a state that it kind of flicker, right? I am still using a life flash here, and the purpose for this life flash for this current character is actually just for me to get the adrenaline. My life is reserved right under the low life threshold, and I have the first to strike, last to fall note over here from the champion, and in order to get that, I simply either press the uh, life flash and it will have i will have the adrenaline buff buff for 20 percent i mean 20 seconds 
Ah, yes. Or I simply can turn off the petrified blood if you don't want to use a life flask. You still have to manually do it, sadly, at the moment. I turn off this shit, and I turn it back on, and I will... Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> Normally, you turn off that, and then you turn back on. It will just give you the buff as well, because your life will shoot over the threshold of low life, and then it will shoot back down. Like this case. Uh, so the word is the kind of main thing that we are having here. Of course, I am using block as well. This shield gives you chance to block this lucky. This is either through this shield or through the gladiator ascendancy. I don't think gladiator gladiator ascendancy is that good at all. In this in this actual scenario, right? The best that you can have from the the gladiator ascendancy is so the two ascendancy for blocked the one ascendancy that gives you one percent damage per one second that you are near the enemy which works pretty well in this situation where you afk around closest the fight will last for anything like close to two minutes then you will have the full benefit of it and uh, you will deal a lot of damage and it's not like entirely useless all the way through right it just ramped up so the only thing that is problematic with this setup that I just show you here, right? For example, here, you can see the degen there. If it is just the degen, there's no way for me to actually mitigate the degen effectively in this character currently. So sadly, we kind of we kind of get to move out of the way. If I do find a different setup that will give me like enough damage mitigation for damage over time or you know just basically enough uh, regeneration to counteract the the very heavy degen that we are facing over here then that would be great but unfortunately i don't think i can stretch my skill tree any further i mean technically i can just get level 100 and uh, in five points i already get leafy shade but that is kind of wasted <laughs> So if I want to, yes, yeah, sure, with higher level character, I can do it. <clears throat> but that doesn't help with another problem, the second and the final problem that we are having, which is single target. As you can see here, this is not the final wave yet, but I already have a lot of problem with single target. And so, you know, there is a point where I think I need to, you know, basically make a deal with the devil or just have to lower my standard a little bit and... My plan is, by the way, I will remake this character as a different class. And that class is going to give me the most amount of damage possible that you can get in an Ascendancy. And personally, right now, in my opinion, it is Assassin. What, can we, what will we do with Assassin? Well, we can either use Assassin or there is also an option that is Saboteur. <clears throat> so either of those class we can potentially go crit right with the skill tree i actually planned a skill tree i think i planned a skill tree somewhere but it's not uh <clears throat> it's not saved right? let me see let me just make sure i will die here so my plan is i will go as a shadow either assassin or um, or, or saboteur. <clears throat> what I will get as assassin is obviously the power charge. This thing for more damage or you know some sometime tankiness versus uh, the situation where you have both the uh, omniphobia and closes at the same time. You need to fight them both at the same time, right? As you see, I still deals enough damage in this wave. It just take a little bit of time, but it is doable. However, if we move to like the last three wave, it is not going to be good enough. And my solution that I can think of right now is only to go crit. And in order to go crit with a build that you do not have a lot of passive to invest into crit, we kind of have to go for assassin, right? So that is the reason why I am considering assassin. Accuracy and ES does dog shit. Right, so <clears throat> that is the first thing. Uh, probably I will get elusive here. 
the chance to avoid all damage from hits. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be, like, beneficial. Maybe it won't be, so... That I need to consider. Mm, what should I... I think I should just put this one away. Alright, uh, let me... Do this. Okay. This is what you should do in the simulacrum fight, by the way. Okay, let me uh, pick up this real quick, and then I will go ahead and get to the skill tree planning thingy. Well, this is uh, a default Uber strict never sync filter, by the way. In case you're wondering what it is, then uh, there you go. Didn't mean to do that, but okay. That's anything. Okay. Only wave nine here. So Assassin, probably the last one I would do this one, right? Chance to avoid all damage from hit. Works pretty well with block as well, so yeah. What I'm going to do with this class, by the way, is probably go for the element of damage here. It costs a few more points, but it is damage. The good thing about this class is you immediately can get Leafy Shade super, super close, right? What else will I do? I will obviously think that I will need to get the Forbidden Flesh and Flame to get Born in Shadow for some more tankiness. This is an extremely good note, by the way. Extremely good. And if that is expensive, I might consider just fucking go for the saboteur. Get these, uh, the trigger box and just, uh, yeah, basically trigger box will be the one who is triggering this uh, Ice Nova and shit. And, uh, yeah. I would try to scale crit, obviously. I would try to still have Pain Atuman here, very, very strong. And since we are here, I will probably go for some shenanigan with this with power charges, right? So this is going to be the first part of the skill tree. Obviously, we'll take this point because it is very efficient. I will obviously go for the power charge. I will probably get the frenzy charge as well because it is quite easy to generate frenzy charges. As you can see here, I have frenzy charge up 100% of the time. It is very doable through a timeless jewel. And so I get frenzy charge here. Maybe let's just cut the friendly charge a little bit first, right? Uh, obviously, there is no way we can deal with costs, so we will have to go here. Luckily, it works out well because we need to get a bunch of block, right? This is going to help you gain endurance charges, by the way. The on block thingy over here. So it is very, very good, right? And then uh, simply just basically grab the very good life notes on the way, right? On the way. And immediately you are on very good percentage of life already. So the other things we need to take is uh, some crit along the way. We kind of need to... Let me see here. I think we might need to get this crit. I'm not... Again, I'm not entirely sure how much block we need to take, but they are very, very, very on the way already. So there is no problem with that whatsoever. We will be using the um, the Tempest Shield as well for spell block. So that is going to be very easily solvable. And also we have a very good bunch of uh, spell block over here so we can get it. As you can see, this skill tree, I am currently at level 84, so it's completely doable, right? We probably already have cap block over here. This is a very rough plan that I have not really, you know, completed, but roughly this is what we are looking at. We will be getting the endurance charges, and uh, probably I am going to stretch out and get one more endurance charge over here. This is going to be super good. If you want to, if you don't use the Brass Dome, you can get reuse extra crit from here. 
reduce extra crit from another one here you also can have this here look at this right so that is already 60 percent if you use extra crit and that is actually very good uh, you can have some crit here for like trying to cap crit or something like that uh, just a bunch of things that we still have on the way right and maybe we can get the element of damage here as well there's a lot of six percent life that we can still have one here one here and one here right if you want to you can have this node over here as well and choose to have either bleeding or poison how do you get bleeding or poison if you use the work gear over here simply craft the flat evasion or flat armor on the helmet in this case right instead of the 15 life the increased armor evasion and energy shield here that i'm having is completely useless so with this one with this mastery over here you can oh with this mastery over here you can uh, get either bleeding or poison uh, immunity as well that is very very strong well is there anything else that i can do there's only one point left probably we are going to have some kind of life modifier if you're using brass dome you cannot have this one but uh the 55 percent uh life here is actually a very good point that you should take so that is level 100 right very rough uh rough plan i'm i'm not sure if i'm going to go with it you even have one more you know uh frenzy charge here that you can get a lot of things i will need to balance it out i will need to actually level up the character and then try it out for myself trying to min max the tree but this is the rough plan that i am probably going for and uh, in order to go crit with assassin it is actually much much easier than any other classes in the game you get access to first of all very easy power charges second you have access to base crit chance more crit, uh, crit multiplier compared to other classes and also you know a bunch of damage and actually defensive perks oh yeah we, in this case if you take elusive you take no extra damage on crit while you have elusive as well it is not going to be to going to be a hundred hundred percent of the time but because of how rapid you are hitting if it drops off it will just immediately get back because you are having a crit hit somewhere so this can be like crit multi i guess and uh, you can drop this mastery right drop this mastery equals we can have frenzy so that is basically the process that i normally uh, come with like this kind of build uh, i do not take any recoup node on the skill tree because actually this work setup you are not, you know, reliant on recoup that much. The recoup that you are having from just the uh, the the blood notch is more than enough to 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 be all the recoup that you need, basically. Uh, currently, I am having yeah blood notch here, forty four percent only. Right now, I think it's super cheap, right? So this is my current castman stun character. It is not crit. It is just elemental overload, and I'm getting it through this scepter over here i buy the base i buy a couple of essences uh, for flat cold damage and then i just just used it on them as you can see here the only thing that is somewhat useful even in this one is a tier 5 hybrid spell and mana and mana is useless attack speed useless life gain per enemy kill is pretty much useless as well so not a fancy scepter at all i bought the base for 20 chaos i spam you can literally do this with one single essence just i'm not looking for much i am just looking for a open prefix so i can craft spell damage on it if you hit spell damage cool if you have still an open prefix on that even cooler you can hit like uh increase cold damage from the crafting bench that is going to be very very strong and that is the prefix by the way right so yeah it's the current character that i am having right now and also the plan for future upgrade for this particular build right it's not completed yet so that is why i do not really want to share a pob because the performance is not is not yet to the level that i 
really want the build to be. I want it to be AFK all the way through the simulacrum. Maybe in the last wave, hit this a little bit slow. I am actually okay with that, but it needs to be able to do it at least, right? Right now, sadly, it cannot actually do it. I'm not sure if this is going to worth anything. I'll just pick it up, right? So waves, wave 11, right? Again, the damage is very slow, so I started this video with beginning this simulacrum run, right? And you can already see on the timer right now. I'm see, I'm looking at it, and it's already 35 minutes. So we need to improve the damage. That is the 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 biggest problem, in my opinion. The damage over time thing, sure, it it does, you know, make you not entirely AFKable sometime, right? As you can see here, up until now, my life bar is flickering just a little bit. So in terms of defense against like just hit damage, it is super good. This setup is super, super good. So, okay, finally, that is probably one big hit from Omniphobia. That is the lucky hit that go through. But I would imagine that it was not uh, was on uh, when word is there so it does take the damage for me as well and uh, yeah so i think again i think this is this is very doable if i just basically switch to a more damage class instead of like go defense the reason why it is possible at the moment i think is probably because of the changes to endurance charges this just basically makes every single class much tankier compared to the previous patch. Previously, I don't think that all class is viable for a Caspian stun build because you simply are too squishy for like um, elementalists or the witches and also the assassins. The assassins, beside the saboteur, is relatively tanky because of one of the ascendancy node the blind node so it makes the character kind of tanky but yeah right now i think it is possible to do on every classes at least if this is the goal for you to afk you will probably not be able to afk and face tank everything in like uber bosses still but uh, i would like to think that uh, that is not meant to be the content for this kind of character anyway so my goal, again, is to go ahead and AFK in the simulacrum. I will be working more on it. And the current plan is I am going to basically have the almost exact same setup in terms of defense. Except I will get Leafy Shade because I will be going for the Assassin. Because with Assassin, I can scale crit. And that would just be a... A, a whole lot more damage than what we are having at the moment with the elemental overload right you see the tooltip in game here looks very sad actually <laughs> so yeah that is the plan so thanks everyone for watching i will probably leave my computer here and go you know take a shower or something like that and come back to the omniphobia being dead and collect the loot but the moment that I face like Kosis in wave 12 to 15 right now, well, it is already a lost fight because I just cannot break through the energy shield at all, right? There is another way that someone already uh, AFK in the simulacrum, by the way, and I mentioned it in like my previous video as well. It is a miracle. He is another person who is also playing and making content around Caspian's stun character. He uh, has AFK, he had AFK the Simulacrum this league, but it's on a relatively expensive character. It is, I, mean, I, would, I think he, he said it is 80 Divines and above, uh, minimum 80 Divines, so I would say 80 to 100, let, let's just say, right? Because prices can change. But that is relatively expensive compared to the average person can actually afford to, to, to assemble. And what I want is to try to make it budget friendly. So I will continue on this journey. I will not stop unless there's nothing else to do. <laughs> so stay tuned for more, you know, content. 
explicitly on this build if you are interested and if you think this is helpful or interesting to you in any way please do consider to like and subscribe to the channel that does help me tremendously in you know continuing to make content like this or different than this but basically it does help me out greatly and i really appreciate that from you thank you stay tuned for more video again like and subscribe and peace